It's Batman Month here on End Credit Reviews. In the past, the Batman we got in live action were either low budget knockoffs or just pure insults. It would not be until 50 years after the creation of Batman that we finally got a proper film adaptation. Originally, the idea was to be a parody movie with Bill Murray as Batman and Eddie Murphy as Robin. Thank God that did not see the light of day. The director would be a young and former Disney animator named Tim Burton. Yes, you heard right, Tim Burton was an animator at Disney. Hi Tim, this is Tim Burton. It made sense that Tim Burton picked Michael Keaton, because he worked with him on his previous film Beetlejuice. When Michael Keaton was announced to be Batman, people freaked out. If you thought people not liking the idea of Heath Ledger as the Joker, Michael Keaton had it worse. But he would prove everyone wrong and Batman would become the highest grossing Batman movie of all time, until The Dark Knight topped it. Batman is about a mysterious crime fighter known as Batman, played this time by Michael Keaton, is being investigated by a photographer named Vicky Vale, played this time by Kim Basinger. Batman happens to stop a robbery at a chemical factory when a criminal falls into a vat of chemicals. This man turns into the Joker, played this time by Jack Nicholson. Batman from 1989 is a great Batman movie that unfortunately gets overlooked by today's generation. First, let's talk about the cast. Michael Keaton as Batman was really good. The main reason why was the fact that he might not look the part as Batman when he's Bruce Wayne, he definitely had the personality. The other is the Joker. Jack Nicholson as the Joker was perfect casting for the time. I can't prefer his Joker to Heath Ledger's because of how cocky he is. Unlike in The Dark Knight where he tried to blend in with the crowd, this one doesn't give a damn and will kill you in broad daylight without being subtle. You can sum up the Joker's insanity with this line. What do you want? My face on the one dollar bill. In connection to the two, I found it weird that the Joker in this version killed Bruce Wayne's parents. This never happened in the comics, and it was written just to give Batman another reason to beat the crap out of him. I love the look of this movie. The dark, gothic, and city-like atmosphere really captured the essence of Batman. The soundtrack is really good as well. Danny Elfman's score can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hans Zimmer. But the reason why I say the soundtrack is good and not amazing is the fact that it's really dated with all the Prince music. My favorite scene is when the Joker has a parade in the streets and Batman stops him with his plane. The imagery is spectacular, and I love the minor detail of the dollar being on top of his hat. The fact that he pulls out a ridiculously long gun from his pants is only something the Joker could do. It's a great movie that sadly gets overlooked as time goes by. I give Batman 3.5 stars out of 4. My face on the one dollar bill. Well, it wouldn't be as insane as replacing Andrew Jackson with Harriet Tubman on the ten dollar bill. 